you're on this channel because you're interested in fitness, bodybuilding, or just getting healthy in general. And you could be interested in these things for many different reasons, getting strong, building your physical capabilities outside of the gym, or maybe even self-defense. Most likely you're into this stuff because you like to look good. And there's no doubt that if you open Instagram right now, one of the first things you'll see is an amazing physique. Male or female, it's going to be all over there. You'll scroll through your feed and see something or another, and you could go over to the explore page and then see a bunch of the same things. Or maybe it's TikTok, and you open up your For You page and see a bunch of dudes posing to Brazilian funk music and doing toxic movements. <laughs> or women trying to show off their derrieres and doing other things that are cringe. There's one thing that's actually really distinct between all of these people, as well as why they are gaining popularity so quickly. The inflation of physiques. It's no secret that the fitness industry today selects the most popular people that it can with the best physiques and the best physical appearance. To be at its forefront and basically its model. They get the most exposure, the most product deals, and much, much more. But this is how it's always been within the fitness and health industry. Even back in the 80s and 70s, the magazines that were being sold had covers that were pretty similar to this kind of stuff. Really attractive women and men posing to preach their lifestyle. However, something really strange started to occur within the last five years or so. And I think you're already probably on to where I'm going with this. Women's waists are getting smaller and butts are getting bigger and females are getting even more jacked. It seems that no different, the males are also getting bigger and almost worse so, we had the youngest IFBB pro ever at 19 years old. But that's not even everything. Just to be a generic fitness influencer, you have to be so much more. Jacked is an understatement. You have to be shredded on gear and hyper attractive. Now, I would say that these are healthy standards for most young individuals to live up to, but I think we're well past what is healthy and there's a clear case to make there. People like Vince used to be American idols. Now, this physique could honestly hardly stand up against your run of the male gym shark athlete. A peak female bodybuilder that looked great, Lisa Lyons, again, best in the class in the 70s and 80s, now couldn't even compare to a quote unquote natural athlete like Beth Carlino. So what is happening? Why is all this dramatic shift occurring right in front of our eyes? And what is it doing to the populace interested in fitness? You know, the ones that are actually going to show up at the gym and improve themselves as a hobby and for fun. Where are their newfound expectations? going to be set and is that a healthy expectation if we look to the past and see what physiques used to look like and their infamy i think it leaves some pretty stellar clues we have people like frank zane and ed coney and their all-time peak infamy looked far different when measured to someone like alex eubank sam Solik, joe ligner or chris bumstead for a clear example alex eubank boasts a total populace that follows him of about 5.3 million individuals joe ligner has a impressive 9 million followers on all platforms. Chris Bumstead has a shocking 34 million total followers. But Frank Zane, one of the best bodybuilders of all time and arguably a person that many people sought after in terms of fitness and health, is a ghost in history compared to these individuals. Muscle and Fitness and Flex Magazine were major sources of bodybuilding and fitness content, with Muscle and Fitness reportedly having about 500,000 readers per month at its peak. We can assume that Zane was featured prominently in these magazines during his Mr. Olympia wins and can generally estimate that in total 200,000 to possibly 300,000 viewers or people who are aware of his presence. Now, if we combine news articles, supplement deals, and other brand assets that he had, a generous assumption would be that he maybe had somewhere around 1 million total people who were very well aware of who he was and keeping up with him. And keep in mind, this was at his all-time peak. It wasn't at his downfall or his rise this was at his best. This is barely a fifth of one of the smallest influencers I mentioned before. Of course, we have to account for the accessibility of content now compared to back in Frank's time, but even still, if we just look at one thing, which is 
let's just take Joe Ligner, and then compare his physique to Frank. It's extremely clear that even at Frank's peak physique, the physique that won him the title of the best bodybuilder in the world is still less lean and smaller armed than Joe Ligner just doing a simple training video in the gym, not aiming to compete, not trying to be the best bodybuilder of all time, just literally out there producing content, having fun in the gym. Now, as a viewer, you might think that Frank's look is more preferable and that is okay. It's a subjective opinion and totally fine. I actually might agree with you. But semantics aside, I think we can both agree that just a guy going to the gym and training for fun, looking leaner and at least near comparable to one of the best bodybuilders of all time is actually shocking. And this is everywhere now too. With all of these fitness companies, you see quote unquote athletes who represent them. And all of these athletes have basically unachievable physiques that you really couldn't obtain unless you used enhancements or steroids. And even then, and sometimes they're still unachievable. So back to my original question, why have times changed so much and these people have so much infamy? For one, the access to media is much easier and so consumption is generally higher, sure. But two, physiques have become so unbelievably good, they're almost impossible not to view. Posting a picture of me being shredded versus me talking about being shredded nets me several hundred more likes or even thousands of views compared to, again, just sitting down and talking and educating people on how to be shredded. Or likewise, if I was to post a picture with my shirt on in a restaurant with a nice group of people, that video or picture gets couple likes, but if I post one with my shirt off flexing, it gets hundreds and hundreds of likes. But the thing is, on all these social media platforms, the fitness influencers are treaded and jacked to the gills 95% of the time. So what's the result? Everyone and their mother is using waist filters, face filters, and sharpening techniques to bring their pictures up that five extra percent to make their physiques look completely insane and maybe leverage the ability to get a sponsor, hopefully. They're also getting on the juice earlier than ever before and at higher doses than ever before. Kids are taking multiple grams of androgens when an enhancement dose could easily be something in the ballpark of 200 milligrams of testosterone and still that's not something you even would need to think about until you were in your 20s. PEDs are widespread in females too, masculinizing them over time just for a short-term outcome. Women will slowly turn themselves into men for three years of fame and sponsorships and then just to be kind of thrown out at the end of that because they've masculinized too much and they don't have an attractive public image. Men are passing away earlier than ever before, with countless people passing away within the fitness industry over the past half a decade that are under the age of 40. To name just a few, you have Joa Fit, you have Ilium Gullum, you have Matthias Pavlok, Joe Ligner, Larissa Borges, Justin Vicky, Hugo Sergio, Estacio Bastista, Catalina, Roberto, Cedric McMillan, who was over the age of 40, but damn near close to just 40 years old, Luke Sandow, Boston Lloyd, you could really go on and on. While this isn't a near pandemic level issue, I think there's a very clear problem developing within the realm of social media. As well, an important reason I really do believe that social media access should be limited to people who are of 18 years or older. The viewers of this content see infamy, and through that infamy, they see the this idol. They almost see a main character type of energy that this person has, and of course as a young male or female you're going to want to achieve that same kind of energy. Furthermore, this leads to a yearning of greatness for these young individuals. As well, it gives them a clear path to find that greatness. Their delusion grows and grows into the reality for them turning into something like using steroids, extreme dieting, and gym, gym, gym becoming the only thing that your entire personality is built off of. Now I want to make a very clear distinction and put a hard line in the sand for you. I think eating healthy, tracking what you eat, going to the gym and doing these things that are a little bit excessive is actually so important. And it is amazingly good, especially when you talk about the obesity rates within our country, the United States that is. I mean, 70% of Americans are overweight and holding more fat than is considered to be healthy and 40% are actually classified as being obese. Clearly a movement towards being conscious about what you eat and going to the gym isn't a bad idea. With the cost of obesity, being honestly devastating. In direct medical expenses in 2019,
2019, the annual medical costs attributed to obesity were estimated to be $173 billion. Obesity-related absentism, which is basically the inability to be a productive human in society, in a nationwide database, the productivity losses ranged between $3.3 billion and $6.3 billion annually. And another thing that people don't often think about is military defense readiness. While countries like China and Russia have no big issues developing a strong and competent military force at a young age, Americans can't say the same at all. Approximately one third of young adults aged 17 to 24 are too heavy or overweight to be qualified for military service, posing a massive threat to defense readiness. So I am all for getting healthier. I think it is critical for America, spreading motivation and the willingness to lose weight and to get healthier and more fit. It should honestly be one of the more higher priorities within our society in this current day and age. What isn't productive, however, is the idolization and editorialization of people representing fitness and healthiness with extremely unrealistic physiques. These are humans abusing steroids and other PEDs to leverage a look that is quite literally shocking. And that look is very clearly unobtainable by about 98% of the population. Because at the end of the day, all this might do is push someone to say, yeah, you know what, I'm more comfortable with my fat friends who don't work out either. We're all happy and somewhat okay with it, so we'll just stay in this group. That work looks way too hard and it's going to take way too long. I'm not even going to start. I don't want to do drugs to look like that because I think it's becoming more and more aware that this day and age, a lot of people in the fitness industry are using drugs. Or there's the other people who are avidly interested in fitness already and built those habits up. Young men who see a role model, for instance, knowing that their path to success included hyperfixation on dietary intake, abundance of steroid usage, and a heavily solitary lifestyle. This mix is very risky. You can imagine how many emotional disorders and behavioral disorders could develop doing something like this as a young man. On one hand, though, I agree that solidarity is very important for individuals, and I also think that working towards an extremely hard goal is critical for humans to be better than what we are now. In many ways, it can also be the end to their lives, and I'm not just addressing a simple heartbeat. I'm talking about many different ways to end a life. It's a balancing act, but most people will fail at it. The solution. What is it really? Well, to be honest, I don't think there actually is a solution. As of 2024, the global fitness industry is valued at approximately $244 billion, encompassing various sectors such as gyms, health clubs, fitness equipment, wearables, and digital fitness solutions, not to mention supplements and other forms of actual pharmacology. You might recognize GLP-1 agonists or drugs like Ozempic have had a wave of popularity recently. And that much money can make just about anything happen happen in our current world. You and I simply can't stop something that massive, nor should we. Money makes the world go round and brings wealth to many places where it normally wouldn't be. It creates jobs, it allows for lives to prosper, and certainly some of it encourages millions to start their fitness journey and to improve their health. My only question continues to be is where does the inflation of physiques stop? if at all. Very soon we'll have genetic therapies which can modify people into having good physiques that are quite literally unnatural to the 10th degree, exceeding any bodily potential beforehand. And many people might just put their entire life on this genetic therapy to leverage a little bit of fame and maybe some sponsorships so that they can have the next best physique. To be honest, I don't know what the answer is and it is kind of scary to see how young and fast people are getting on steroids into bodybuilding and trying to become influencers in the fitness industry. And to be honest, it is one of the easier routes because you don't need a great personality all of the time. You just need a really good physique and post ridiculous content. And that can be your road to making millions of dollars because a $244 billion industry has a million to spare. But what do you think? I would love to discuss with you down in the comments below as I always do. And for sure, if you enjoyed this video, please subscribe. It does help me out a lot. This channel is quite small at this current time still. So it would be the world to me if you simply just click the subscribe button and it's completely free. Join our Discord group with the link below.